In this lesson, we look at Network Address Translation, or NAT. Although NAT was used to keep the IPv4 address space effective longer, it also brought other uses that most, if not all, organizations have used or are still using. You can download the PDF script for this video from above or at the end of the video. Before we look at the uses of NAT and the associated advantages and disadvantages, we need to know how it works. In general, NAT shows a small set of IPv4 public addresses to the Internet. The internal private addresses are not shown to the external entities. For more information on how IP networks and addressing work, see the video above. This accomplishes two things. First, it enables an organization to function with fewer public IPv4 addresses. The organizations could have thousands of internal devices that use private addresses. These addresses are not assigned to the organization, so that other organizations can also use them. This reduces the cost of trying to lease a public address for every internal device. Assigned to the organization are the public addresses presented to the Internet. In this example, 500 devices share five public IP addresses. The NAT device, a VPN appliance, maps internal sessions to the shared public addresses. It's important to understand that basic NAT operating at OSI Layer 3 enables a one-to-one -one relationship. In other words, a public address can only support one internal address at a time. In our example, if the five public addresses are already in use, the sixth request for a NAT connection is denied. The organization would have to lease enough public addresses to ensure sufficient simultaneous connections to enable unhindered business operation. There is a more efficient and cheaper way. Port Address Translation, or PAT, is a NAT variation that operates at OSI Layer 4. It adds an external port number to the mapping of internal and external addresses. This theoretically allows 65,536 internal devices to share a single public address. However, this number is based on the number of available port numbers and each device can be engaged in multiple sessions, each session with its own port number. The CISSP Common Body of Knowledge asserts that a more reasonable design is one least public address for every 100 internal devices. The 100 to 1 ratio depends on operational realities and needs. This ratio is a good starting point, but it will likely change given your organization's unique operating environment. Devices we can use for NAT implementation include firewalls, routers, gateways, and proxies. The biggest security advantage of using NAT is the blocking of threat actor network footprinting. The threat actor can only see the public addresses used. He can't see the IP addresses used internally or the subnets configured. The internal network is effectively separated from access by external entities. NAT looks like a great way to manage access, and it is, but it also comes with some disadvantages. NAT is not consistently implemented by vendors because the IETF, the organization that manages protocol standards, never created a standard. NAT was supposed to be a short-term solution. Peer-to-peer -peer connections between devices on different sides of the NAT appliance can be difficult to implement. This affects VoIP, protocols, and services like Skype. NAT changes incoming packets to reflect the internal delivery addresses. This changes the hash value of the packet. Consequently, a recipient comparing their calculated hash against the hash included in the packet will be different. This breaks IPsec. This is addressed with NAT-T or NAT traversal. Well, that's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.